Let's look at how we can calculate Z scores from raw data. That means that we're going to calculate a specific Z score for every piece of raw data that we have. So let's look at this example that we have. Here I've got a bunch of data on students and it's their commute time from wherever they're going to school and how long it usually takes them with no traffic. So uh, this was actually taken for an, uh, the data was taken for an evening class. So it measured how long it took them to come from uh, work to, where, uh, to, to the school. So we've got this raw data and each part of the raw data is called, is considered a raw score. And we want to calculate a Z score for each, uh, each uh, person here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the formula Z equals the raw score minus the mean of all the data that we have divided by the standard deviation of all the data that we have. So we've got to calculate this mean and standard deviation before we can calculate the z-score. So let's, uh, let's change this into a table. I'm going to click on a piece of data. I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to choose table. And it says, is this the data for my table? Yep. Goes down to line 39. My table has headers, yes, that's the title there. And I click OK. And so there I have commute with no traffic. And now while we're in table making mode, let's make a separate column for the Z score. We can call this uh, Z score of commute with I think I'll just call it NT for no traffic. So I type that in and that automatically adds it to the table. Let's widen this so we can see what's happening. Okay, now we need to calculate the mean and the standard deviation for our raw data. And we're going to do that with our data analysis tool that you should have installed. If not, there's a separate video for that. So I go to data, data analysis, and if you don't have data analysis, that means that you haven't installed it, so you need to look at that other uh, video. And I'm gonna choose, from the data analysis, I'm gonna choose descriptive statistics. And the input range, I'm going to start at the top of the table here with the label. And then I'm going to go down with the shift arrow to the bottom of the table. Oh, and I will stop at, now I'm doing the shift up arrow to get back to 39. So it goes from E3 to E39. It's grouped by columns. The labels are in the first row. The output range, um, I want to change that. So I will delete that. And now I will move the table up, and I think I want the output range to be H4. Now make sure, before you type, click on H4, make sure your cursor is in the right box, because sometimes when you choose output range, the cursor jumps back up to the input range. Make sure it's in the output range. So I click that there. And then I want the summary statistics, and that's already uh, uh, checked. And I press OK. And look, I get all those numbers. Let's clean up those numbers. Let's go to home. And for the number function, I'm going to choose this is the number, and I'll reduce it to two decimal points. And I'm going to make these tables wider so I can read what's happening. And there we've got um, the descriptive statistics for our data. Now we want the mean, so I'm going to select this line. And I'm going to highlight it. And we want the standard deviation. I'm going to select these two cells and highlight it. And now we've got our mean and our standard deviation. We've got our all of our raw scores here. So now we can calculate the z-score for each of our data points. So I'm going to click in the top row and I'm going to type in an Excel equation. That's going to be equal. Now I'm going to do the numerator, so that needs to be in parentheses open parentheses, and then I'm going to do the raw score is E4. So it highlights that cell. And then I'm going to do minus the mean. Now the mean is in I3. 
five, and it's always going to be an I5. So when it calculates all these others, I want to freeze that cell. So I'm going to do dollar I dollar five. So that'll always use that figure, even when it computes it for a different cell. And I'll do shift close parentheses, divide by, and then the standard deviation, I also want to freeze. So that is in I9. So I'll do dollar I dollar nine. And that should give us a Z score. So I'll press enter. And that gave us a z-score automatically for all the uh, the tables. Now, those are ugly numbers, so I'm going to select that whole column. I'm going to go up to Home, and then in the Number section, I'm going to change the format to Number, and that will reduce it to two decimal points. And so here we have the z-score for everybody. Now, the data was already in order from the lowest score to the highest. So we're going down from a z-score of minus 0.96 up to a z-score of 3.31. So that looks like it's pretty skewed because we've got a, a several high z's, but no z-score lower than um, minus 1, which would you expect because it can't take a negative amount of time to get someplace. So we're going to have a floor effect, and it looks like the floor effect is about 3 minutes. That's the time it takes to navigate some parking lots. For people that are extremely uh, close, can't get less than three minutes. And um, but the dist there's no limit to the distance, so we've got a positive skew to the the data. And that way, we've calculated a z-score for all of our raw data.